Now that the Ape is completely disassembled, uh, it's time to clean all the pieces and repair what's broken. Here's the floor rails before cleaning. And we're going to take a wire brush to them and they'll clean right up real nice. They're actually in pretty good shape, all things considered. 1955, been sitting outside for 30 years. And here they are sitting on what's going to be the new floor, which looks a lot better than this floor, which had lots of rodents living in it before I started cutting it up. Here's what the new floor looks like, just to have a look at it, make sure it's correct. The seat mount and gas tank holder I got from a fella in Europe. Didn't come with uh, springs for the seat, so I had to put those on. Also had to buy a few new parts, like the uh, cylinder shield for uh, heat and uh, the gas tank itself. These are repops. The brake lines, I thought I was going to have to buy a whole new set, but I was told it's just held together with solder, so you can uh, heat it up and all the solder should come out and they should be very loose and you can just take them apart. And that turned out to be true. So we took them all apart. I have all the ends and the fittings. And now I'm able to use brand new brake lines with uh, the old fittings. They actually fit perfectly, so I'll have to shape the lines and solder them. Here's the brake pedal, which we saw in the last video, and I had to do a lot of filing to get the splines back together, and I had to heat the uh, the shaft up with a yellow wrench till it was cherry hot, and then straighten it out in a in a vise. And here it is, straight and cleaned up, ready to go back in the bike. The carburetor is, uh, as you can see, completely filthy, and. Uh, almost i thought beyond repair but once i took it apart and did a bit of research um i found out that you can put carburetors in one of these bad boys right here so i bought a cheap one on amazon it's an ultrasonic cleaner and um they come out of the bath looking pretty dirty this is what it looked like before to give you an idea how much comes off when you clean these and this is uh wire brushed as well so it's a little polished but they the carburetor cleaned up real nice Here's the air intake, which comes off of the uh, gas tank into the carburetor. It's connected with a rubber hose, but this is what it looked like before cleaning. And again, lots of wire work and scraping, and, and this is what it looks like after. It's ready for priming and paint. The front hub, I had to be extra careful with this. They're extremely hard to find, but it cleaned up real nice once I took it all apart. The headlight is a Ferro Basso headlight, which means it sits on the front fender. It was actually in pretty good shape, needed a little bit of straightening out, but um, a little bit of dolly work and it's fine. And here's the frame at the sandblasters, completely sandblasted, all the rust removed. Only a few little pinholes in it. Here's the um, throttle tube cleaned up. Here's the handlebar. Uh, clamp I guess headset before with some of the nice green paint and after cleanup and here are the two uh, parts together these are the lever parts and the, the screws that hold them together they were uh, pretty rough shape but again they cleaned up pretty nice and they didn't need any fixing this is the differential on the emergency brake the emergency brake itself was completely trashed. Had to take it all apart and uh, clean it all. We're going to put new brake pads in there. But we got it working. And uh, there, there's the disc for the brake that uh, that fits over. I needed a gasket for this, and uh, of course I didn't have one, so I had to make one. Um, and I've spray painted it with uh, some copper gasket sealer. And this is the emergency brake all cleaned up. Came out pretty good. And here's the frame with the new floor welded in at Scoot Art in Montreal. And I, when I got it home, it was time to start mocking things up just to see how they looked. Get the seat harness on there and the tank holder. Put some floor rails, get the, get the brakes all hooked up, see what they look like. These are the covers for the chain tensioners before and after sandblasting and some, uh, some light uh, 
uh, some white wire wheel work. And these little covers fit on top of these guys, which are the covers for the actual chains. And you can see those that little slot is where the those covers go. That's where the chain tensioner is. The frame itself is ready for prep. So at this point, we have that green bowl of stuff there. That's phospho. Osfo? Osfo, yeah. And that's basically phosphoric acid. So you can etch the steel and it kills all the rust. And uh, this is a little before and after. And you can see that um, it takes several coats. Uh, this is one coat. This is two coats. And then you have to sand in between because the corrosion turns into a solid mass that you can remove. And it's always good to let it uh, uh, cure for a couple of days. Here's another coat, what it looks like when all the rust is gone. Again, letting it cure for a couple more days. This is self-etching primer, which actually also bites the steel as well as the phosphoric acid that you apply to it. And hopefully this should be enough to keep all that nasty old, old, old rust off uh, once it's painted. And uh, here's some nice... Uh, glazing putty I picked up to fill the little holes. Here's the VIN number, AB3T. Once the self-etching primer is dried, we can put the red oxide primer on all the undersides and the frame. And then we can go and put some high-low filler on and start filling in pinholes with the body filler. This is a mock-up of the brake lever that actually works in the floor rails on the repaired floor. This is the, I just wanted to see what the script badge looked like here. This is the engine mount, which actually connects to the frame. This is what it looked like before. It was all cleaned up. And this is what it looks like once it's attached. And the engine actually just mounts right to that with a case bolt. Fork is getting some love in this picture. And this is one of the hydraulic brake uh, cylinders getting a... Well, it's the pump, actually. And cases are all ready. Ready to go for a rebuild, and I wanted to see what the differential and the cases would look like together. It's the first time I did that. This is the mount for the axles and the seat harness. So this is the center pin for almost everything on the Ape. Connects directly to the frame. And this is, again, mocking things up just to see how they fit. This is with the motor and the differential back in. This is all temporary, of course. I just want to make sure things fit before I start painting them. And the exhaust, which is a really interesting exhaust, uh, is a three-part thing that you take apart. This one I bought from Italy, very bad shape. No insides, no baffles, no anything. So we start sandblasting and using the uh, Osfo on it just to get all the rust off it and wire brush it all. Get it down to the bare metal. You can see it's quite long. It's about four feet long. It goes underneath the ape from the engine. There it is with some ceramic heat paint on it. The fuel tap is beautiful. Uh, I decided to keep it rather than get a, a reproduction. Uh, it's uh, brass and it's got this nice uh, Dolorto logo on it. There was just no way I was going to let this go. Even though the handle's broken, I'm going to get a new handle for it off another tap. This is uh, some pinholes that were brazed. They are there before. This is the front fender, which is in really bad shape. So there's some more pinholes in the front fender that I had to braze with some, uh, some brass brazing rods. I'm not very good at that sort of thing. I had somebody show me a long time ago, but it turned out pretty good. This is the seat uh, support, uh, one part of it anyway. It needed some brazing as well. This is how the exhaust mounts to the frame. And this is what everything looks like with the exhaust in it. Comes at the back end, as you can see. These are some of the kickstart uh, mechanisms that needed uh, a bit of cleaning. So we sandblasted and wire brushed them all. In case you're wondering, at this stage, I'm about three or four years into this project. <laughs> I'm just picking away at it. Here's the clutch cover, very long clutch uh, lever on it. And uh, here it is all taken apart and cleaned up. Everything gets uh, new O-rings, it all gets lubricated, some grease thrown on it. 
So the seat, the, the exhaust actually goes right under the seat. So you need a heat shield for under the seat so you don't burn your bum. And here's what uh, all the pieces look like together. So these bearings, these, uh, these races are shot. They're too old. Surfaces are too rough. And they got these nice clean ones here. So this is the tool that I use to remove and replace them. It's a big threaded rod, about three feet long, with a bunch of big, big washers and a couple of nuts. And there's the new upper. Job done. When those bearings go in, they're going to be just as smooth as silk. In the next video, we're going to go over how to fill in all these little pinholes and imperfections. So we make them nice and smooth. And uh, yeah, we'll see you then.